Hello all YouTubers, I am Dorla Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this tropical discussion for September 6, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from the Weather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest the Weather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. Today we're going to be tracking not one, not two, not three, but four potential tropical cyclones here in the Atlantic Ocean. I know this is pretty crazy, but you guys have to keep in mind that it's September and stuff like this can happen. So we're going to be taking a look at these four tropical cyclones or four potential tropical cyclones today. Two have a good shot at developing, two don't. All right, But just because the chances are lower doesn't mean that they won't develop. So we'll be taking a look at these four potential tropical cyclones in this video. But before I get started, the other day I did do a video on a potential September snowstorm. So if you want to check that out after this video, please feel free. And I also did do a community post on the community page on my channel. How excited are you guys for this winter? So feel free to go vote in the community tab on my channel and just vote how excited are you for this winter. Anyway, let's get started. So two systems off the coast of Africa or very close to Africa in the East Tropical Atlantic both have a 90% chance of development. So this right here is Invest 92L. The one behind it is 93L. I don't believe there's a 91L anymore that has fizzled out. Um, the other two have not been deemed invest yet. There's one heading towards North Carolina, actually. So one heading towards the Carolina, so be careful of that. 30% chance of development. And one still with a 10% 10, 10 chance of development um, towards the south um, there in the, in the Caribbean. So we're going to be taking a look at all these. So starting with, uh, let's start with 93L out by Africa here. It's the most far to the east. This has a 90% chance to develop within the next five days. And even within the next two days, still a 70% chance of development. So we're going to see showers and storms showing some signs of organization. There is a broad area of low pressure off the coast of Western Africa. Conditions will be conducive for development. And a tropical depression or storm is expected within the next couple days as it moves west over the East Tropical Atlantic. Um, Cabo Verde Islands, it's going to be impacting you guys probably now or really soon. So be sure to keep an eye on the system. And we can see some heavy rainfall there and gusty winds. Uh, Monday night and Tuesday, right? Next storm has a 90% 90, 90 chance to develop. This is 92L. because It's nice that they're all named an invest because it's easier to identify. I'm not just saying the storm behind 92L. It's actually easier to say which storm is which now because some of them are invest. So that's nice. But 92L right here has a 90% chance to develop within the next five days and within the next two days. So this has a better shot at developing sooner. Um, this area of low pressure is located midway between West Coast of Africa and the Leeward Islands. Um, it's getting better defined and better organized. Um, it's gradual, though. It's, none of these are really developing too rapidly. They're taking their time. Um, the showers and storms aren't organized too much. Again, gradual development, and we can see a depression or a storm tonight or even Monday as this moves west over the central tropical Atlantic. Next storm here, let's go to disturbance number three. This has a 10% chance to develop here. Um, this is just a tropical wave, not an invest. Over the Central Caribbean, uh, we are seeing some disorganized showers. Um, if we do see any development, it will be over the next day or two. If not, then the, up, then the wind chill will just kick in, and it's all done for that storm. Then there's one that just popped up recently that already has a 30% chance to develop off the coast. Uh, actually, it's actually right near Bermuda. I think Bermuda is like right there. If you can see the little blip, Bermuda is right, right about there. So the storm is just to the southeast of Bermuda probably impacting Bermuda as we speak. Um, this is a trough low pressure. This is southeast of Bermuda, again, as I said. Um, we are seeing some cloudiness and showers, so there's really no thunderstorms, actually. They're just saying cloudiness and showers, so <laughs> too much convection may not be coming out of this. Um, you can see some slow development of this storm over the next several days as it moves westward, but we will see. But interest in the southeast of Mid-Atlantic should definitely monitor the progress of this system. So sea surface temperature anomalies, okay, that's going to be very important. As for disturbances 1 and 2, 92L and 93L, they're sitting in slightly above average waters, right? Meaning warmer waters, which is better for development. Disturbance number 3, the one in the Caribbean, also above average waters, but the, but the system that's sitting southeast of Bermuda right now has water temperatures that are anywhere from 1.5 to 2.5 degrees plus Celsius above average. So there's some really warm water 
at least warmer than average water for all four of these systems. Now, as for the actual ocean water temperatures, uh, for 92 and 93 L, looks like just over 80 degrees, maybe around 81 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. For the system in the Caribbean, uh, just temperature number three, I believe, the ocean water temperatures are sitting in the mid 80s or so, maybe closer to the upper 80s, but 29 Celsius is pretty much the mid 80s. As for the storm southeast of Bermuda, that also has similar water temperatures, mid to maybe close to upper 80s, but water just to the southwest of that storm system is well into the upper 80s here. Um, so again, all these systems have some very warm water. It's it's warmer than average. The water is actually warm. That's going to help these systems develop. So we're going to be taking a look at 92L. All right. So let's take a look at that. Winds have gone up since yesterday. 35 mile per hour winds with winds gusting to 45 miles per hour. Pressure has fallen a couple millibars down to 1,006. All right. And when we take a look at our our ship's diagnostic message for the storm system. Right, I'm going to take another look at this because we have seen some changes. One thing you may notice for 92, I believe this is 92L, right? Yes. Uh, one thing you may have noticed is that the wind shear is next to nothing now. At least now through the next three, two days or so. Now through the next two days, there's really going to be no wind shear. Then wind shear will gradually go up to around maybe 15 to 20 knots, but that's not completely horrible. Um, the storm system can manage that, um, especially since it'll be stronger by then. It'll be able to take a little bit more wind shear that can be thrown at it. Um, as for the ocean water temperatures, again, just above 80, around 81 degrees, maybe going up to 82 or 83 gradually over the next few days. As for the storm speed, though, that's moving pretty good right now, 14 miles an hour or so, 15 miles an hour, but that could grab, that could dramatically slow down to a few miles per hour, then maybe slightly speed up back again. As for the heat content, that could go up over the next few days. So even though the wind shear will go up, so will the heat content. So. There will be some things working for this storm system at 492L and some things working against it. Um, but you can definitely see, okay, on, on the uh, satellite imagery, um, there is definitely a spin. We definitely see a counterclockwise spin, no doubt about that. We're seeing some good convection on developing right on that north side, um, northwest side as well. But on the eastern side, there's really no, uh, there's really nothing going on over here on the eastern side. So that's something... Uh, needs to be watched as well. Um, we might be seeing a little bit of shear coming from the northeast, but it's not quite evident. Um, actually, shear could be coming from the opposite direction because some clouds are getting strewn out this way as well. But either way, the storm is looking healthy. All right, as I showed you, there's really not much shear right now. All right, but sometimes the satellite loop gives us a better view of the shear. But there's definitely been some convectivity or convection developing on the north and northwest side of the storm system. So we're it's trying to get attacked together. And we just got the 18Z. Um, run in of where the storm is currently located. So 40 and a half degrees west and 16 and a half degrees north are the coordinates for the storm system. So as for the model track guidance, a lot of models say that it's going to head northwest. A few models say at some point it'll start to make a turn more towards due north and kind of head out to sea. But some of the models are keeping on the westward track. And if that happens, all right, then we could be seeing it head towards the United States. But the GEFS tracks, at least the ensembles, do kind of take it eventually have it making it more of a north and even north northeast turn but some models say it could strengthen as it does so but as i always say i like to look at these models for the um tracking forecast not necessarily the intensity because sometimes that could be a little bit off now look at the gefs parallel all right now this is where it gets a little messy because some models bring them if, if the storm starts to track a little bit farther south it can has a better chance to stay further south and continue its westward trend but if it moves north too much if it's just a little bit too far to the north, it can make a, a bend out to sea, really not impact anybody, which I guess would be the good news out of this. Uh, again, not like anybody needs a uh, hurricane this year. Um, but the model, I've noticed that the model tracks that do take it farther north actually make it a lot stronger. Notice the ones, the models that take it farther north have it around 990, anywhere from 990 to 970 millibars of pressure, even lower than that. But the models that take it farther south keep it around 1,000 or maybe 990 if you're lucky. So a lot of the stronger, the stronger, or, the, or rather the model tracks that hit the system north actually strengthen it more, which is pretty weird. I've been noticing that over the GEFS parallel models. So as for the intensity guidance, though, a lot of models do say that with, within the next couple of days, this will become a tropical storm. Some say a lower end, some say a higher end tropical storm. Nobody makes it a hurricane yet. Then eventually it could slowly drop back towards a tropical depression after it starts uh, dying out a little bit. Now, 93L is a newly named invest. It just came off the coast of Africa, and already 
Winds are 30 miles per hour. Winds are gusting to 40 miles per hour. Heading towards the Cabo Verde Islands here. Um, again, a pressure about 1,006 millibars. So the pressure is the same as the other system, but the winds are just ever so slightly weaker. The shift synoptic message for this storm system, all right, shows, again, wind shear is very, very low, actually. This, uh, um, this even shows low amounts of wind shear through the next four days. And then maybe, uh, again, more moderate to maybe some higher shear over the next five to seven days. Once you get to a week out, the wind shear pretty much becomes unbearable. Over 32 knots, that's like 38 miles per hour, which is too unbearable for a system usually. As for the ocean water temperatures, though, that's another thing that could be against 93L. I mean, I think it could develop, has a good chance to develop, but ocean water temperatures go up to 28 Celsius, which is approximately like 82 Fahrenheit, but then they fall to 26 and a half, all right, 26.3 even, which is less than 80. Then they come back up to 29. So it could move through a little cool patch in the Atlantic before maybe reaching closer to the Caribbean where the waters are a lot warmer. So this could have, this could have maybe a minor setback. The only, that's, like, that's the thing, though. Even if the water temperatures are like 79 and a half Fahrenheit, this would still develop because there's really not much shear out there at all. So that's one thing on the system side is no shear. Now, the storm speed moving about 10 miles an hour could go up to maybe 20 or 23 miles per hour. Then maybe slow back down again. We'll see about that. Uh, it probably will be speeding up, though. As for the heat content, it remains generally low. Right? Maybe over the next seven days, we could see as it gets closer to the Caribbean, maybe some higher heat content values, but heat content isn't astronomically high, like we've seen like 100, 128. We haven't seen it that high. I mean, we have, but not for this system. Now, when you look at satellite imagery, it almost looks like, now, according to the ship's diagnostic message, there is 10 knots of shear right now, which is very little. It's not bad, but I've been noticing that the storm is spinning, but all the convection is kind of like weakening and gradually sagging towards the south. Like it's, it's like the wind shear is just pushing all of the convective activity away. And then we have some more convectivity that can merge with this that's over Africa right now. But there is definitely a spin. Okay, you can see the it's a broad low pressure spin. Maybe we could even indicate a low center, maybe. Because if we take a look at, let's take a look at where the low center is actually located. Oh, well, actually, that's the next map I have right here. So um, low is currently located about 18 and a half degrees west and 14 and a half degrees north. So take a look at that on the satellite imagery. They think that the storm center right now is located right about there. All right, so that does make sense when you look at the satellite imagery, all right? So it's got a rotation. It looks like maybe the convectivity is weakening and some convectivity towards the north is trying to re-strengthen, um, like fly back up and maybe strengthen the storm a little bit more. Um, here's some of the model track guidance. Again, it's coming off in the more northern, it's coming off right at the Cabo Verde Island. So once it's this far north, it's already at 15 degrees north latitude, almost. Some models do keep it a little bit further south, but all the models so far do bring it north and out to sea. But again, all these systems that I'm showing you that could be moving out to sea, this is what you have to watch in a place like Europe because you can get the remnants or even steal a tropical storm, whatever is left of these systems. It could be a tropical storm. It could be a post-tropical storm with 60. Like sometimes a post-tropical storm can have 70 mile per hour winds, right? Just because it's post-tropical doesn't mean the winds aren't strong. It just means that the storm is not organized enough to be a hurricane. But we can still have a post-tropical storm with like 70 mile an hour winds slamming the Europe, all right? And that's why Europe needs to watch these storms very closely as well, especially since they're forecast to make a northern turn. Now, the GEFS tracks, again, kind of the same thing, a northwest turn and then up towards the north and east. Uh, GEFS parallel model tracks do actually bring it a little bit further south, but in the end, I think most of the parallel tracks do bring it north, whether it's over here or over here. Eventually, they do have these systems moving towards the north and out to sea, which would obviously be good news. Now, the bad thing is, is that 93L could strengthen a lot of the models have a strength into a category one near category two hurricane already. And this is this invest is pretty much newly named. A couple models have it becoming a tropical storm, but every single model has it becoming at least a tropical storm, and most have it becoming at least a category one hurricane. Now, for all these systems, we're gonna be taking a look. So let's take a look at about 66 hours out, 2 a.m. on September 9th. There is a system that's heading towards the Carolinas. Here is 92L potentially. Here's 93L looking a lot stronger even though it's slightly tinier. Uh, I think there will really be three storms to watch because the one in the Caribbean may not develop, but still, these are four potential tropical systems that we have to, that we have to watch because these all do have a chance of development. So let's continue here, progressing farther out in time. Uh, let's actually go to five days out right here. As you can see, here's 92L still working its way west. So is 93L looking very intense. I'll have to check the wind speeds on that with the GFS model. 
and maybe yet another system merging off a little bit farther south this time. So this system could maybe stay on a more southern track and head towards the United States. Now, what I want to see what the GFS has 93L becoming because they think it's pretty strong. And when we take a look at the wind speeds, wow. They already have it as at least a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane by Friday morning at 8 o'clock. So this could potentially be something pretty intense. Let's take a look at this. All right. Okay, I hate when GFS does that because they always, they always leave the storm farther behind. All right, that's okay. So let's go back to the North Atlantic. And let's go back to the Cyclone. Because the GFS, they have a hard time. When you, when you tell the GFS model to focus on one system, it has a hard time focusing on it. Some of the models do that. All right, but you can still see the storm in the overall picture here. Um, by the time we head towards seven days out, here's what's left of 92L, here's 93L, and here's our next system right here. Um, that storm that's already made its way into the Carolinas by that point. Let's actually take a look at that. All right, you can see, there it is. All right, let's actually, let's actually see if we can zoom into the southeast coast. Uh, I think we can, but we might not get the vorticity. Yeah, I don't think we get the vorticity map with this. I guess we do. All right, here we go. So there you go. There's your storm making landfall and around Wilmington, North Carolina here by September 10th at 8 o'clock in the morning. So this is something to definitely keep your eyes on. Please share this video with your friends. Consider subscribing, please, as well. I am Dweather Dude, signing off. Till next time, catch you guys in the next video.